Good morning, everybody. We we'll study today the portion of Balak. A short introduction. We're starting from the book titled Selections from the Kutei Sichot, the third talk about the days of Moshiach and the preparation for arrival of Moshiach, which is incumbent upon each one of us. But just as an introduction, this week's Torah portion, Balak, is a very unusual, very unique portion on many levels. Number one, it is the only portion that does not contain not a single mitzvah. From Bo, from the third portion of Shemot, when the Jewish people are preparing to leave Egypt, mm -hmm. every Torah portion will contain mitzvot. Some will do a single digit, some will do double digits, but every portion is, is teaching us commandments. This is an entire portion for no commandment whatsoever. Number two, it is the only portion named after a non-Jew who did not worship idols. We have Noah, but Noah observed the seven laws of Noah. We have Sarah, Chaye Sarah. We have Korach, who is Jewish. We have Yitro, and we have Korach, and we have Pinchas next week, and this week is Balak, mm -hmm. a non-Jewish guy, a Jew hater, who disobeyed God, and yet the Torah portion is named after him. That's number two or three. And finally, the only source that's clearly stated in the Torah about the coming of Mashiach and the days of redemption are in this week's Torah portion. Bal Bilam was hired to curse the Jewish people. Instead, he blessed them <clears throat> on four different occasions. He was asked for, on three occasions, and he prophesied. But then at the end, before he leaves, another blessing, more blessings. They are so powerful that the Talmud tells us that sages wanted to include the Balak portion as part of the prayer every morning. Just like you say Shema morning and evening, right after Shema to say Balak. And they stay, they did not bring it into prayer because of Tircha de Tzibura, because it may be too much for the community to spend extra time in synagogue. That's the only reason. What? So they didn't pick the as Yashir, we do say, but they didn't pick a other commandments or the Azinu, or there are many, many great blessings, except this extra portion. There is, this is not the time to discuss the reason, but it just shows that this uh, Torah portion is loaded with blessings beyond anything else. Is Matovo found in here? Yes, Matovo so is part of the prayer. We make a prayer every morning. Matovo. Right, but they want, this was added much later. The Talmud, Talmudic time, there was no Matovo. Mm -hmm. And in addition, they wanted the entire portion for Vayar Balak Ben Sipor until the killing of Zimri Ben Salu. Finally, there is a, I just uh, studied this week, there's a famous rabbi called the Hatam Sofer. Hatam Sofer is very well known, rabbi and commentator to the Torah. In his commentary to the Torah, I think the last one, uh, he writes that from man's creation, there is witnesses to every part of the Torah. Ad God tells Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of knowledge. We have testimony. Cain killed Abel, the flood. Every time, every story in the Torah, Egyptians, every coming, living in the desert, it's, a, it's part of history that cannot be made up. Because parents, the Khatam Sofer says, parents will not lie to their children. So if it was created at one point from fake news, so to say, it wouldn't continue. The reason we take the fact that the Jewish people left Egypt and the fact that there were 10 plagues, that the Egyptian uh, cities were built by the Jewish slaves, the fact that Miriam was afflicted with leprosy, the fact that Pinchas killed Zimri, 
is part of our history that our parents heard from their parents, from their parents, from their parents. Otherwise, somebody had to have started it and other people, other families would say, we never heard of it. I was in that generation, I didn't hear about that. It's impossible. History cannot be faked. Mm -hmm. um, your life story, you can make up whatever you want and write a book about your life story. You cannot write about the story of the universe, the history. History is something cannot be faked. How do we know another example is every other religion that was created, even though it contains today billions of people, it always started from two people or from 10 people or from 12. It didn't start from a group of large number listening to God, like the giving of the Torah. In the po in the portion of Eschanan, the second portion of the book of Deuteronomy, God says to the Jewish people, the best proof that I came down on Mount Sinai is that no one else is trying to copy it. Has it been anybody else who can say that God appeared to the entire nation? Mm -hmm. It will never happen, never will happen. And what's the reason? Because you cannot fake a large scale event. You can take 10 men and make them lie. You can take a person and say, he's a prophet, he's holy. God appeared to him and he's a good narrator, a good speaker. You cannot take a group of thousands and thousands of people and make up, ask them to make up a story to tell their children. So therefore, there is a proof to the to history. Comes the Khatam Sofer and says that the entire portion of Balak is the only exception, like every rule is an exception, there is no proof other than that's what God told us. In other words, no one was there when Balak is summon, summons Bilam. No one was there when Balak is asking Bilam. There, there were very few people that are totally unrelated to Jewish people. The only reason it's seen that takes an entire Torah portion is because God wants to show how much he loves the Jewish people. Because the blessings of Bilam are so powerful that nothing can be compared to. And therefore God shared with us the entire story, even though we had no clue. That's why, uh, one more thing before we study about Mashiach, Balak had brought in a total of 42 sacrifices because there were three times that he built an altar and each altar he put in parva ail, a ball and a ram, seven, seven, seven altars three times. Each one of them was seven, it was 14. So 14 times three comes out to 19, 42. 19. The Gemara says the reward for Balak having brought 42 sacrifices is what? David, King David. He was lucky enough that his great grandson was a glon. A glon was the father of uh, Ruth. Mm -hmm. And Ruth was the grandmother of David. By the way, that's why he brought 14. People are asking, what's the idea of seven times two? Why, why 14? Uh, you can say seven days of the week, you can say seven uh, skies, seven heavens, you can say uh, seven attributes, but the reason is seven times two equals 14, and the name David is also 14. David is Dalet Vav Dead. Dalet Vav Dalet is 14. In other words, he was trying to eliminate the Jewish people by um, creating um, impurity to get rid of David, of, of King David. That's why I was 14 and he did, it, he did it three times. Anyway, but the Talmud tells us that the reward for 42 sacrifices he bought for God is the fact that he has great grandson. So, by the way, that explains why the Torah portion is named after Balak. Because Balak is my grandfather, our grandfather. He is a Jew hater. He tried, and he was partially successful to, uh, because of Bilam's uh, advice. But <clears throat> at the end of the day, he's our great-grandfather. Why is it that God chose to send Ruth and David from such a defiled mm -hmm. uh, Jew hater? That's a, a topic for our discussion. I think we touched upon it in Tanya. I'm surprised that the Pasha was not Balak instead of Bilam. Because the principal, principal character is Balak. Bilam is the one who makes the blessings, but the instigator, the one in charge, is Balak. 
All right. <clears throat> the Rebbe is going to take us into a whole different area. The idea is that Bilam, when he prophesizes, he brings blessing upon blessings to the Jewish people. But there is an entire topic that he brings up, a theme that comes, comes up in his blessings, which is the coming of Mashiach, the arrival of Messiah. In fact, he's the only one who is alluding to two separate Mashiachs, Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben David. So, the lesson from the after, I'm um, sorry, why not three? I meant the second time. Page 294. Regarding Bilam's prophecy. 394, 294. 394. Concerning the end of days, Bil Bilam says the following. A ruler shall emerge from Yaakov and obliterate the remnant of the city. Rashi comments, there will be another ruling, ruler from Yaakov. This prophecy concerns the King, king Mashiach, Messiah, about whom it is written, he will rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. This is Rashi. Rashi says, when he's talking about, I see him in the future, not now, he refers to the King Mashiach, or as we're going to call him Mashiach, he's a king. Mm -hmm. he, will rule for, he will rule from ocean to ocean and from the end from the start of the rivers in the east to the end of the earth to the west we find similar wording in the prophet zechariah's description of the king mashiach zechariah also refers to mashiach as a ruler in a similar way behold your king meaning mashiach shall come a poor man riding on a donkey Right, that's where I came to the idea of donkeys. He will rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. He also, not only Bilam is alluding from sea to sea and from the from the river to the end of earth, Zechariah also says, Miyam Adyam Uminahar Adaf Se Oretz. It's part of Psalm, by the way, from river to river and from the from ocean to ocean, from sea to sea and from river in the east to the end of the earth. Rambam, <clears throat> Maimonides, refers to Zechariah's word when interpreting another verse from Bilam's prophecy. Rambam brings the Zechariah wording to another verse of Bilam talking about the end of days. He shall break down all of Seth's descendants, stating, uh, Bilam says that Mashiach will break all of Seth's descending, meaning all the Jews. This refers to King Mashiach, about whom it is written, he will rule from sea to sea. Rambam says, what is he talking about? He's talking about Mashiach that will rule from, rule from sea to sea. What does it mean? That's what the Rebbe wants to understand. Ibn Ezra <clears throat> also interprets the, roof te the proof text cited by Rashi, he will rule from sea to sea and from the river to the end of the earth as referring to the King Mashiach reigning over the entire world, stating this is what Ibn Ezra writes from the South Sea called the Red Sea to the North Sea that is the ocean and from the river that is the river that emerges from Eden, which is the beginning of the East and until the ends of the earth, which is the end of the West. Ibn Ezra explained from ocean to ocean and from river in the east to the river to the end of the earth and the West. He says it, it talks about one sea called the Red Sea. To the end of sea, it talks about the South Sea, the ocean, the South Sea. And from the east, it says, when God created the universe, a man was created in the Garden of Eden, Evenahar Yotzeme Eden. And the a river comes forth from Eden, from the east, and it goes down and it splits into three rivers the Sea of Reeds, the Hidekel, <laughs> the Prat, the Euphrates, actually, Varial Arban Arashim. It splits into four different streams, four different rivers. He feeds them all. 
Says the Ibn Ezra, the East refers to Gan Eden, where the first where it all stem from, and it goes up four to four different four different uh, branches, so to say, branches off to the end of the earth, which is the west, all the way as far as you can. So it covers from one end to the other, and the north, north to south, and east to west. Yes. This all comes out of the half Torah, not the actual reading. This is what we're learning now comes out from the... No. Comes from, no, comes no, from the no. Itself. In the Torah. I must have messed up. Ra no, Bilam says... That there will be the darach kochav mi Yaakov and come shevet mi Israel in the future. Rambam uses so is a karai so Rambam Rashi Rashi says from ocean to ocean from river in the east to the end of earth and the west. Rambam or Zechariah say the same thing about the coming of Mashiach from ocean to ocean, river to river. Rambam says that in another part of this expulsion, Vekarkar called Bnei Shet, he will destroy uh, all this, the descendants of Seth, says Rashi, says Rambam. That, that's part of the prophecy of Ibilam. He's referring to Mashiach, that will rule from ocean to ocean, from river to river. The Rebbe is, and needs to, the Rebbe is asking, clarification is necessary. Why do the verses use the words from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth? Instead of simply saying over the entire earth or the like. Also, it is necessary to understand why the verses mentioned from sea to sea when Mashiach rule will be manifest primarily over the lands and their inhabitants. Trav is asking a question that's actually split into two. Why is this the Tor Rashi, Rambam, Zechariah, the reference of Bilam is about ocean to ocean, river to the end of the earth. Say the entire universe. That's what it means. Ocean to ocean, meaning it covers everything. So majority of the universe, two thirds of our planet earth is water. Okay, I understand. Now comes the second question. The Rebbe says, Mashiach will rule over humans, not over, over the water. The water if nothing, nobody needs to rule over them. If it's about dry land where people live, it should say entire universe. It doesn't fit to, con to express rulership over the entire universe by saying from ocean to ocean and from river to the river, north to south, east to west. Ali, what bothers you? It bothers me, but go ahead. What bothers you? I can't, I don't know where we're going with this. All right, so I want to explain again. When Mash this week's Torah portion, Bilam makes reference to the coming of Mashiach, King Mashiach that will rule the entire universe. He will also run every part of our planet. The question the Rebbe is saying, how come the reference to Mashiach is mentioned in many, many occasions, starting in this week's portion, Torah portion, Rashi, Rambam, Zechariah, is about oceans, referring to the ocean to ocean, also river to river. It should say the entire earth. Who, who, who need, why do Mashiach don't need to rule from ocean to ocean? This is, so the, the Rebbe says, it is possible to explain the above according to the interpretations of Hasidut. Based on the words of the Alter Rebbe, he says that if you are look, if you're looking for a good explanation, Kabbalah will explain it very well, based on the Alter Rebbe's words, that the ultimate perfection to be achieved in the era of Mashiach is dependent on our actions and divine service over the entire course of the exile. By studying the Torah and observing the mitzvot, hearing God's voice, we prepare the world as a whole, and the Jewish people in particular, for the ultimate perfection that will characterize the era of Mashiach. The Alter Rebbe says, in order for Mashiach to arrive, we need to perfect ourselves and our part of the universe. I'm a merchant, you're a teacher. Each one has their area of expertise, of talents, of mission, of purpose. They need to perfect their area, their area and that will bring the era of Mashiach. Since the manner in which God rewards man for his divine service follows the pattern of measure for measure, 
God operates on the rule of measure for measure. And therefore, if I perfect, if I perfect my part, God will return in return, will reciprocate with perfecting the universe. It follows that our action and divine services that lead to Moshiach's coming must resemble the lofty revelations that will be correct, that will characterize the, that era. In other words, in order to reach the revelation of the sovereignty of King Mashiach, who will rule from sea to sea and from the river to the end of the earth, every person must carry out divine service that is representative of this ultimate goal. The Rebbe says, according to Hasidut, the Alter Rebbe says that you know how you bring Mashiach to change the entire universe? Change you, your little universe. My body, my family, my surrounding is my universe. Walk on it, perfect it, bring it closer, prepare it for Mashiach, and each one of us doing their part in return, God will do measure for measure and take the entire universe. Now we can understand why the reference for King Mashiach rulership refers to ocean to ocean, river to river, because it will play out in the way how we rule our universe. This concept can be understood in greater depth based on the teachings of the Rebbe, of, I'm sorry, based on the teaching that the Rebbe, Reb Nachum of Chernobyl, quoted in the name of the Baal Shem Tov in his work, Ma'or Einaim, he says, every Jew must perfect and prepare the portion of the structure of Mashiach within his soul. As explained in another source, there is an allusion to this concept in Nigla, in the revealed Torah uh, dimension of the Torah, in one source, Talmud Yerushalmi interprets the verse, a star shall go forth from Yaakov, this week's Torah portion, Bilam's prophecy, as referring to every Jew, a star referring to every one of us. However, another source in Talmud Yerushalmi and several commentaries on the verse interpret it, interpret it as referring to Moshiach. The disparity is resolved by explaining that every person possesses a portion of the structure of Moshiach. Reb Nachum of Chernobyl brings a commentary on behalf of the Baal Shem Tov that the only way for God to bring Mashiach is when we realize that each one of us possess one part of Mashiach. And when we perfect that part and you perfect your part, simultaneously or cumulatively, we are bringing Mashiach. We create that. In other words, Mashiach is when we change and live a Mashiach lifestyle, when we behave Mashiach life behavior, we are bringing Mashiach. That's the only way for Mashiach to arrive. And therefore, and that explains the contradiction about the star that will rise in this week's Torah portion. One place it refers to an individual, another place the star refers to Mashiach. Says the Baal Shem, there is no contradiction. The star referring to every Jew because he has one part of Mashiach. When you star and my star and you star will shine a Mashiach style, then Mashiach will arrive, the big, the general star. Yes. If we won't achieve perfection, are we in fact Mashiach collectively? Yes. So do we really need Mashiach, so to speak, when collectively? We yes. Need yes. Because it will take us to a different plateau. In other words, in order for Mashiach to elevate us to a place of peace and harmony, and perfection of the universe God created, we need to put the efforts and do my Mashiach. What is my Mashiach to arrive? Bring Mashiach. How do you bring Mashiach? Living a life God commanded us, making our surrounding Mashiach style. When you do it and I do it and everybody else does it, it will bring Mash the real Mashiach that will take us to the next step. Yes, Harry? Everyone is on the same. When everybody, when, yes. It's almost like the Pisha Basim. The Jews had, had, had That's the idea of Tusha Bosim. Because on a Shabbos, we are elevated by ourselves without much effort. Before. As long as we don't destroy it by violating Shabbat, and then Mashiach will arrive. And don't think it's far, that far. It's not very far. We want Mashiach now. We want Mashiach now. This is also reflected in Tanya, which states that the revelation of the inner dimension of the heart within every Jew, that is the, his bond to God, that transcends mortal knowledge and therefore is referred to as a diversion of attention, 
parallels the exodus of the divine presence in its entirety from exile to cap of cap and captivity for all time. The Alter Rebbe in Tanya writes that as soon as we realize that the boundaries are not there for a Jew and we can overcome those boundaries because they don't exist, it will bring Mashiach into the universe. So again, we have the same theme here, and that is, in order for Mashiach to arrive, King Mashiach to arrive, I have part of Mashiach that's embedded in me, and you do the same. And when we bring that this to the fourth and live our life with that part and everyone else um, um, together, it will create the real Mashiach. On this basis, it can be explained that there is a precise allusion in the verse, he will rule from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth, to the divine service that to be performed by each individual. Now we can understand why referring to the arrival of Moshiach that he will rule from ocean to ocean, from sea to sea, and from river to the end of the earth, thus achieving his personal redemption as preparation to marry the ultimate revelation of the sovereignty of Mashiach throughout the entire world, that is, the all-encompassing redemption. Every person's individual spark of Mashiach, the inner dimension of his heart, must rule over all the aspects and dimensions of his spiritual personality. This will be explained. Our spiritual personalities are divided into two fundamental categories, from sea to sea, and from the river to the end of the earth. Therefore, these dimensions are featured in the description of Moshiach's sovereignty. So, Rabbi, if you want to know and talk about how we change and bring our private small spark of Moshiach and make it part of life, part of the universe, it is expressed in the term of sea to sea and river to the end of earth. That's why when referring to Moshiach in several places, as we started, it refers to Moshiach that will rule from sea to sea and from river to the end of the earth, not just saying he'll rule over all. Because the, in order for him to arrive, there must be a little private Moshiach of my, as an, in, 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 as an individual, come to the fourth. And that will happen through those two processes of sea to sea and river to the end of the earth. I'm so confused by why... Like you said, why the entire earth? What's why separate? How do you bring Mashiach to all over the entire earth? By bringing you little Mashiach out to the right. fourth, right? right? How do you bring you, you Mashiach to the fourth? There will be two aspects of your personalities that need to be affected. And those two personalities, those two aspects of your personality are called sea to sea and river to the end of earth. And therefore, when that is achieved, Mashiach will come. So when you talk about the coming of Mashiach in the end of days, Mashiach will rule from sea to sea and from the river to the end of the earth, because that's the what will achieve our little Mashiach within our personalities. Yes. Question, Rabbi. Um, for us to bring Mashiach, it has to be a communal effort because we all have a spark of... Um... We all are impacted by each other, correct. Right. So the rule of Mashiach, will that be a communal effort also by all? Because since we all possess a spark. The communal effort is by convincing each individual yeah. to bring his spark to the force. Yeah, so we bring Mashiach. We have to, yes. So Otherwise, Mashiach will not be. Of Mashiach, I'm asking, because we all possess a spark, will the rule of Mashiach be a communal effort also? Uh, we will be totally nullified to Mashiach. We will be united around Mashiach. Okay. So I don't know if what you refer to as communal I mean effort. That the rulership is, is Mashiach with everyone. It will be all inclusive. Yeah, it will take that, everybody. Because yes. you said it's not him, Mashiach ruling over. Right, no not forcing. So not it's before. more a communal. Draw. Okay. okay, so you call it a communal. So, That's fine. So you're going, you're okay. Going, you're going to copy this Lahado in a song from Sea to Shining Sea. So, so Shining Shining sea. Part of what our national our hymns are. There are so many aspects of our constitution that are based on Torah. Oh, it's yeah. just unbelievable. Here is one of them. Yes. 
and the law and the and the from the uh, uh, from C to the shining C. is part of the, one of the phrases of the of the yeah, one of my hymns. Yeah, okay. I understand some of our founding fathers had commotion in the house. Yeah, in, in Hebrew. Um, Can we continue? Now the Rebbe wants to explain what C2C refers to a human being's service of God. To clarify the concept in a metaphoric sense, there is a difference between the sea and the dry land. The sea refers to entities that are hidden, like the fish and plants in the seas that are covered up by the waters of these bodies. Dry land refers to entities that are revealed, like the plants, animals, and humans that inhabit the dry land. In man's divine service, the sea refers to the powers of the soul within the person himself, his intellectual, emotional, and functional potentials as they exist within his soul. Dry land refers to the activities he performs in the world at large. What's the difference between sea and dry land? Major, major difference. Everything that exists in dry land exists in the oceans. Every mm. animal, every creature, the Torah tells us. Mm. The difference is by the sea, everything is covered. It's it's uh, it's hidden, mm. right? The water covers them. We know the entire universe. There. All our discoveries, with all our advancements, it, we are discovering new species, new animals who never knew existed. Mm. Why? Because it's hidden. However, dry land has animals, humans, plants, plows, a lot of stuff, but it's all revealed. In the human being, the sea refers to the inner powers of the human. Inner powers meaning mm -hmm. uh, my thought, my powers, my willpower, my pleasure. These are different powers that nobody can tell. Nobody can tell what I'm thinking and what I want and how happy I am. If you can read my mind, you won't be able to. But otherwise, it's like someone who's diving with a, with a camera, with, with mm -hmm. a projector. But otherwise, it's totally dark and nobody else knows except mm -hmm. the person himself. Mm -hmm. When the above verse speaks about the sea, it emphasizes that Mashiach rule must be from sea to sea. That is, his dominion must extend over two seas. He's talking about from sea to sea. It doesn't say over all seas and dry land. From sea to sea, therefore, there must be two categories of hidden powers within the human that he must rule over. What are these two seas? The metaphoric implications of the two seas in the context of an individual's divine service can be explained and it can be explained on the basis of the prophecy of Zechariah. It shall come to pass on that day that living water shall flow forth from Jerusalem, half of it to the primeval, primeval sea, and half of it to the last sea. The two seas mentioned regarding Mashiach refers to the primeval sea and the last sea, the first of the seas and the final one. Says the Rebbe, let's go put the Zechariah. Zechariah says, when Mashiach will come, there will be a spring of water coming out of Jerusalem to water two seas, the primeval, the first one, and the last sea, and the end. In other words, all inclusive from beginning to the end. Now go back to the, in a figurative way, to the human. In our divine service, the primeval sea refers to the very first of all our soul powers. The power of Chokma wisdom, which is also the first of our intellectual powers. The last C refers to the last of our potentials, the potential for action. A person's divine service is not complete until he rules over all his potentials, from the first of his potential to the uh, with the, with the power of Chokma, until the last of, uh, of them, the power of action. Says the Rebbe, you have two C's in the human. Chokhma is the start, the river comes forth from Eden, the beginning intellectual, which super, super controls everything of our human being, because with our mind, we decide and we rule, right. until the last ocean. What's the last sea? 
action. It's not a real action, but the powerful action, which is malchut, by the way, but the rabbi is not mentioning, which is the power, the potential for action. Action is already outside the ocean, right? Remember we talked about revealed and hidden? So action cannot be part of the sea. It's the powerful action. In other words, Mashiach will bring forth the energy to rule over from the one ocean to the other, meaning from the start of our hidden power, which is Chochmah, to the last of hidden power, which is the potential for action. Yes? In the speech. It's in between. Yeah, but the huh? We start with the thought and we'll go right to action. We skip around speech. Speech, or speech and action. Yeah. So I think I alluded to that when we talk about speech and action, it's internal speech, what you talk to yourself, mm -hmm. and internal yeah. power of potential for action, not actual action. Because that's not it. Okay. But the potential for for action the decision. Uh, yeah. yeah, but decisions is intellectual. Uh, power of action is that's what I'm going to do, and I'm sure about that. Yeah, but it's a decision, no? Because you might think a about decision, it, but the decision is forcing you or bringing you into action. That's right. what we're talking about. Yes. Right. In other words. Initially, a person has to rule over his power of Chochmah and his intellectual faculties as a whole so that they should be entirely encompassed by holiness. The reason for this is because a person's conduct as a whole and all its particulars are dependent upon his mental faculties. Mm -hmm. For the brain rules over the heart to protect it from evil de desires. Conversely, however, this is the potential from the start. Let's go to the bottom. Labor and effort must be invested in ruling until and over the last sea. The potential of action, as we see in actual fact, intellectually, a person can thoroughly understand how he should conduct himself in all particulars and yet be unable to control himself and bring his understanding into actual practice. In what he does, in what he does in his everyday life, it is possible that he will be will have positive feelings for all matters of holiness, including good intentions to actually change his conduct. And moreover, he may even speak about doing these good things, but he will not actually do anything about it. And after all, actions is most essential. So it's action, not That's potential. why you need the potential for action. No, so it's action, not potential. Okay. That's why you need to have from C to C, the C, the start, the highest, which is Chochmah, which is intellectual, all the way down to the last of the powers, internal power, the power for action. It needs to be ruled by a godly Mashiach behavior. In Why? Because somebody can have the intellectual faculties directing you, I know smoking is not well, I know sugary food is not good, but in action, it has nothing to do. Action must be also ruled in a Mashiach style behavior where he does what the, the, you, what the intellect says. Therefore, it has to be C to C. Soon we'll see that we're talking about the potential of action, not actual. This is the emphasis here that man's divine service has to be from C to C. It is impossible for his divine service to be complete without ruling over these two extremes, the primeval C, wisdom, and the last C, which is action. Now the rabbi will continue. Right. Mm -hmm. All the above. Mm -hmm. No, no, we will see it now. Any yeah. questions yeah. other than why is it power of action is potential, potential for action? And not real action. All, all the above, however, applies to the person himself. Even regarding his potential for action, the power that solely involves interaction with people and entities outside himself, it is still impossible. It, I'm sorry, it is still possible that he is not acting for the sake of those people and entities. Rather, his action could be part of his own personal divine service. After all, that what is the litmus test that shows whether his entire being is permeated with holiness when his positive virtues are expressed in concrete action. Therefore, he acts in a desirable manner. 
However, his internal, his, in, okay. his intent is focused on his own personal perfection and not bringing about change to others in the world outside himself. And this is the intent of the continuation of the verse, which explained that it is not sufficient to rule from sea to sea. Instead, one's dominion must also extend from the river, one, the river to the end of the earth. The rabbi is going to explain to us that there are two parts of our service of God. One is to perfect ourselves internally, and that is the hidden part, ocean. The ocean refers to this first ocean, which is the start of our existence, which is chokhmah, intellect, mm -hmm. and all the way to the power of action. The power of action is the external last part of the human, which is hidden. Says the Rebbe, even though it might be expressed appropriately, meaning it will bring me to do action in the revealed way appropriately, it's not necessarily that I am doing it for another part of my service of God, which is to perfect mm -hmm. the universe, mm -hmm. to change people, to affect mm -hmm. people. In other words, the Torah says, give tzedakah. Intellectually, I learn service of God, I have to give tzedakah. And I say to myself, I'm going to give tzedakah. Now I'm controlling the power, the potential of action. When I give tzedakah, when I find a poor man and I give him money, why did I do it? I did it because I want reward. I want God to bless me. So it's all about me, 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 me. Even though it's holy, even though it's selfless, even though it's service of God, but it's in the context of my benefit. It's in the context of me serving God. But there is another category, which is to perfect the universe outside of you, to change people. So when I give tzedakah, it's because I want another person to say thank you to God. I don't care. I don't pay. I don't put. I do not put emphasis on what's in it for me, but rather what's the purpose. That's called the external aspect of action. In other words, it's revealed. I teach him. I convince him. I help him, or I change the universe. I make a blessing because I want God to be here. Not because of what's in it for me, but it's the external. Now it should be understood, clarify the two categories, and therefore I was very careful not to jump from one to the other. The hidden part, which is the C, C to C, mm -hmm. refers to the powers from start to the end of internal that are hidden. Nobody knows my intention. No, nobody knows my decisions. Nobody knows what I'm going to do because the power of action it, it is, is a power is hidden. Then there is another aspect and that is from the river in the east to the end of the earth. That's already revealed. That's already when I act, but I'm acting for the sake of God, for the sake of bringing God into the universe, for the sake of making sure the external your existence outside of my personality uh, is also affected by God. Does that help you, Ali? No, <laughs> okay, matter. it doesn't matter. If you want to disagree, I agree with that. <laughs> I wanted to clarify here <laughs> when we, that there is a difference between action as it exists within me versus action as it exists within affecting others mm -hmm. and can be interchanged. I can be doing action externally for my own benefit. Mm -hmm. And I can have the power of action, not for myself, but for others. But for the clarity, I've divided into two halves. So one half is a potential for action, which is internal, nobody knows, and it's all about me. And the other part, which is the external actual behavior conduct, which is for the sake of bringing God into outside. To clarify, as cited above, Ibn Ezra interprets the river as referring to the river that emerges from Eden. As the verse states, the river was intended to water the garden, for at the beginning of creation, this was the location of Adam, the first man. God placed them in the Garden of Eden to cultivate it and protect it. The Ibn Ezra says that river to the end of sea refers to the river of east, to the end of the earth and the west, because God created Adam in the Garden of Eden. And over there it says, Benahar Yotseme Eden, and the, and the river comes out from the east of Eden. And why, why God came out with a river? It says, La Shkotetagan. La, la means to water the garden. In other words, the purpose of that river is to 
perfect the universe. In a more general sense, the garden refers to the world as a whole, which is called my garden. That is God's garden, as it is written. I came into my garden, my sister and bride. This cultivating and protecting the world at large constitutes the purpose of man's divine service. That, through his divine service, in refining and purifying the world, he affects the entire world, revealing and making it evident that God, that it is God's garden. And that's the purpose of men throughout their life, to bring God into the universe by making it a beautiful spiritual garden. This is the emphasis of the phrase from the form, the river to the end of the, the earth, that it is forbidden for a person to enclose himself in his own little corner and, does, and disregard the world outside, saying, I have saved myself. Even though he finds himself in the Garden of Eden, a place where godliness is revealed, he must devote himself to the working of, of with the, the river to water the garden, to use the power of the river that emerges from Eden uh, to refine and purify the entire world, including the end of the earth. In other words, now we understand the divine service of, in this of this nature will lead to the ultimate perfection of Moshiach's sovereignty when he will rule from sea to sea and from river to the end of the earth. Not only will Moshiach attain the heights of personal perfection, behold, my servant will succeed. He will be exalted and uprised, reaching very great heights. He will perfect the entire world, motivating all the nations to serve God together. As it is written, for then I will transform the people so that they will all call upon the name of God in the true and ultimate redemption may it come immediately. So let's summarize what Rabbi is saying. Why the reference to Moshiach is ruling from sea to sea and from, from one river to the end of the earth? Because it refers to I, me, you, each one individual bringing, revealing Mashiach in our part of the universe. How do you do that? From sea to sea. Sea refers to a hidden powers, the start of them, which is Chokhmah intellect, until the end, which is the power of action. We need to perfect them to serve God. But then that's sea to sea, but it's not enough. The purpose of our creation is to create a garden for God, to bring God into a revealed way in the universe. And that refers to the second part from river to the end of the earth river. The first river was created in the garden of Eden to beautify the garden. And that's our job. By doing so, we will create the real Moshiach that will change the entire universe and bring all the nations to call upon God. And that's all in this week's Torah portion in Bilam's blessings. So, so we have to each, thank you very much and have a good Shabbos. Each of us has to have a spark of Mashiach to bring. So I'm going to do.